Hello everyone, my name is Reed and welcome to Storytime. Today we are going to be reading some malicious compliance stories. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. I just wanted to take a second to let you guys know that this is going to be my last day recording for this channel. First of all, I want to mention that this is 100% my decision to leave. And second of all, I want to say that I'm really sorry about this. We just switched from Jake's voice in this channel to my voice on this channel, and now we're going to be switching to someone else, and it really sucks that I have to put you guys through that again. More or less, some unexpected things happen, and some expected things happen. I'm getting a promotion at work, which means more business trips, which means less time that I have to devote to other things. My wife is pregnant, I'm super excited about that, and that's going to take up a lot of time as well, especially in the coming years. And on top of that, I do other voiceover things, like voicing in indie games, or YouTube comic dubs, and, and cool stuff like that. But yeah, that's the gist of it. So whoever the new person is tomorrow, Greet them with the utmost respect and just compliment them. Shower them with compliments and show them your love and really enjoy what they're doing for you guys because, you know, there's probably a lot more that goes on in this channel that you don't really know about. So truly, honestly, really appreciate the content that you guys get every single day. It's time consuming and people are out there doing it and doing it for you. So enjoy and be grateful. I mean, if you want to be at work an extra three hours. Back in my retail days, I was working at a certain large blue and yellow electronics store selling phones. My department had an unofficial rule. Don't start any new cell phone transactions at half an hour before closing. This was for two reasons. One, the support we had for the phone carriers was East Coast time and generally closed an hour before the store closed. Two, I don't know if anyone here has bought a cell phone on a contract, but it can take forever if something goes wrong. My general manager openly hated this rule. He got his bonus off of customer surveys, and any time a customer left even mildly dissatisfied, he'd have a very mild heart attack. So obviously, last minute customers being told, sorry, we can't do that, are generally pretty grumpy. After a year of working there, I ended up as the most senior person in the department and certainly the one with the most knowledge about its inner functions. I was also almost always the closer. On to the malicious compliance. My general manager was badgering me every night for months about helping customers after our usual half hour cutoff. Normally I'd just deny him and explain that if he wanted them to be taken care of right then, he could do it for himself. He'd back off, he has no idea how to sell a phone, and when he has tried, he screws up. This particular night, I saw a large family walking in, beelining toward my department at 8.45pm. We closed at 9. I was in a capricious mood and decided this would be the night that my general manager would stop bugging me. The family rolls up, I give them the spiel. Sorry, we can't do any activations after 8.30, blah blah blah. They look sad and start to head back out, and right on cue, my general manager walks up to them, chats for a bit, then starts heading to me for my nightly, oh, come on, can't you help them, I know it's late. Me, you know what, general manager, I'll take care of them. You're closing up the doors, right? It might run a little late. General manager, yep, I'm closing the store tonight. Perfect. I chatted with this particular family the other day, they didn't speak English that well. They were porting in from like three different prepaid carriers and the company they were trying to open an account for is known for being the worst. So I start the transaction by 9.30 p.m. There's major problems. Two of the ports aren't going through because I was given the wrong info for the port. Everything's going to crap. I look at my manager, I smile, he smiles back. He doesn't know how bad everything's going. Around 10 p.m., he's checking his watch, he's getting antsy, it's just me, him, and the customers in the store. At 10.30, he asks me how much longer I'm going to be. I answer, I don't know, and explain everything that's going wrong. He asks if I can call that company's account support. Lol, I closed three hours ago. 11 p.m. rolls around, he's just sitting on a counter across the store, alternating between goofing off on his phone and staring at me. 11.30 rolls by, he looks visibly upset. Keep in mind, this is a man with the same personality as drywall. Seeing any emotion on his face is rare. We hit midnight. I've somehow fixed one of the port errors. Most everything else is still screwed beyond my abilities without calling the carrier. 
Hey, OP, is this going to be much longer? Maybe we should call it a night. Yeah, to be entirely honest, there's nothing I could have done for them as soon as things started going wrong. I spent the last two hours fixing problems I have no business even attempting to fix, and somehow I've made some minute progress. However, I know the customer satisfaction is important to you, and I'm willing to stay the five more hours I need to get this even kind of working for them. Okay, tell them to come back tomorrow and we'll finish up. By the way, we haven't been able to finalize the purchase for the phones, so they can't take the new ones, and the ports that did work means their old phones don't work, so you're gonna have to tell them that their phones aren't gonna work tonight. General Manager dot dot dot. Sure, wish there was some way we could have avoided starting a process like this with no possibility for support from the carrier. They could have made quick work of this. Whew. OP making the giant sacrifices to get back at the general manager. True devotion and dedication. The mile is required? Fine. Backstory. This was 20-something years ago when my wife was a freshman in high school. She has asthma and can't run. For some nonsensical reason, the school required her inhaler to be kept in the office like the rest of the students' prescription medicines. In the event of an asthma attack, she would have to walk to the office, without the benefit of breathing, and ask for the inhaler. Because of this, she was not willing to exasperate her symptoms, except a few times maliciously, but that's a story for another day. Her PE teacher, in other words, was a giant jerk bag. He would fail you for not knowing the words to the class alma mater. On to the malicious compliance. The day inevitably comes when the class is required to run the mile. She tells her teacher she can't run it because of her asthma. He basically says, get over it, it's not that bad, and reiterates that the mile is required and she had to run it. Not wanting to have an asthma attack and wait for another student to get the nurse while she suffocates, she settles on a compromise unbeknownst to her teacher. She proceeds to walk the mile as slow as possible, stopping along the way to kick the pebbles and twigs and all manner of lollygagging until she finished her mile at the end of her PE period, 45-ish minutes, her teacher waiting all the while since he couldn't leave until every student finished. Professor Jerkbag still wouldn't let her out of the mile after this, so it became her routine for the entire year. I'm surprised the coach didn't try to, like, push the wife forward. Like, come on, hurry up, ah, you're walking really slow, complain, blah, 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 blah. But either way, I'm glad you could waste this Jerkbag's time. Good job, OP's wife. Won't pay for renewal, but will pay for training. Hmm... My job offers the great benefit where they will pay for any career development courses you take. You get to select the courses you want and still get paid your normal hourly rate. It's a cool perk of the job, except they require 10 days of training minimum each year. The courses you select have to be in line with your career and approved prior to your attendance. After a while, the material just overlaps, but you still have to meet your 10-day minimum. Closing the end of 2019, I had only 8 out of 10 of my required days of training. Unto the malicious compliance. A couple years ago, I took a two-day course that offered a certification upon completion. The certification expires after two years and requires a fee if you want to renew it. The fee is $100, which I guess isn't a lot, but I still didn't want to pay for it. I asked HR if they offered any reimbursement for certification renewals. Well, guess who took a $2,000 course to save themselves $100? This guy! It's such a weird company policy that you have to take 10 days of courses? Huh, I've never heard that before. I mean, where I work, they're willing to pay a certain amount per year for you to take approved classes, but uh, nothing like this requirement. That's kind of crazy. <sighs> Fine, let's do it your way. So I work as an assistant at an office. I am notably younger than my colleagues, so I'm usually the one to stand on chairs to hang a clock or something on the wall. I'm totally fine with that, but the other day my boss, Ella, wants me to hang a picture on the wall. Sure thing, no problem. Me, standing on a chair, I'm having a hard time getting the wire on the back of the picture frame to catch on the hook in the wall. Uh, my hand keeps getting in the way. Ella, well, why don't you try grabbing it from the edge? 
Oh, oh, I can't. There's something sharp here. And then I proceed to struggle. Why don't you try grabbing it from the edge? Note, she is known not to listen to what other people have to say. Frustrates the freak out of me. I can't do that because there's something sharp on the edge. If I grab it, I'll cut myself. But I bet it would work if you just grabbed the edge. Now, at this point, I normally just ignore her and go ask someone else for help or figure out a different way to do it, but there was no one around today, and for some reason, I just couldn't get the dang picture on the wall. Fine, we can do it your way, but I don't want to do it since there is something sharp on the edge. Can you do it for me? Sure. Ella stands up on the chair, grabs edge of the picture frame. Ouch! I, I just cut myself? Oh, oh my god, how did this happen? I felt so mean, but I had to try so hard to stop myself from laughing. I did not feel bad for her at all. <laughs> Screw this boss, man. Maybe they'll start listening now. Come on. Always keep to the left side on the stairs. All right, I will. No matter what. When I was in high school, there were some incidences of accidents on staircases due to people just using them however they saw fit during the times with the most foot traffic. As a result, our school imposed a rule that, from now on, everyone had to keep to their left on staircases to avoid accidents and ensure a safe and efficient traffic flow. A couple of months after this rule was enacted, I'm walking up the stairs, keeping to my left as instructed, to one of my classes, when this teacher comes down towards me walking on her right. Obviously then, within a matter of seconds, we are now standing in each other's way one step apart. Move, please? She orders me in an excessively unfriendly tone. The rule says we have to keep to the left, miss. I reply with the most condescending politeness I can muster. Come on, just move. She orders again, this time even less friendly than before. Well, I'm on the correct side, miss, so you'll have to go around me. I insist once again extremely politely. We went back and forth like that for an embarrassingly long amount of time before she finally attempted to argue that she needed to hold the rail because of her shoes. I reminded her that there is a rail on the other side of the staircase and that it wasn't my fault she chose to wear awkward shoes and I wasn't going to break the rules just to accommodate her fashion choices. Then she attempted to make the I'm a woman, so as a man, you have to move slash open doors for me slash pay for my dinner argument. But I told her that she has equal rights now, so that means I can't break the rules for her. She insisted she wasn't a feminist, though, but I told her that she had a job, so therefore she was on some level. And regardless, her personal opinion about it was irrelevant because society has decided we are all equal now. So I'm still not breaking the rules for her. At that point, she abandoned all attempts to reason with me and just threatened to take me to the principal if I didn't move. I told her I would be more than happy to go see the principal about it, but she just said she didn't have time and finally stepped around me. A few days later, the teacher directly in charge of my house, all kids in my school were split into about five different house groups, each house had a teacher in charge, and that teacher was your first contact for discipline, etc. after things escalated from just dealing with whatever particular teacher you might have an issue with, called me outside during school assembly and proceeded to yell at me and tell me that whatever a teacher says, I am to obey without question, and what I did on the staircase was unacceptable behavior, etc. However, I insisted that I would not break a rule even if a teacher ordered me to. As a result, he took me directly to the principal. We both explained the situation to him, and finally, someone was actually on my side. He did tell me that I was being a touch dogmatic about things, but said I shouldn't be punished for obeying the rules. He also requested that in the future I use a little more discretion about such things, but he was more or less on my side. So yes, happy ending really. Extremely malicious, but extremely compliant. Sounds like the principal just said, stay to the left, but it's optional, which means all heck is going to break loose now. Great job, principal. You want my tuition back? Years ago, I worked for a place that offered tuition reimbursement as a benefit. I was working at an inbound telephone customer service call center when I started taking advantage of this benefit and figured it was a chance for a better lot in life. There was the usual stipulation of having to pay back anything I had received in the prior year I had to sign off on though. 
I was also working to collect various IT certifications at the time. About halfway through my new degree program, the IT certs finally paid off and I got a job that paid a good bit more than what I was making then. I figured they would come after the tuition, but it seemed worth the risk for the raise, so I jumped on it. And of course, not long after I left, I received a letter from my former employee asking for their money back, along with a copy of the agreement I signed. Where is the malicious compliance, you ask? I wrote back to them and acknowledged that I did indeed sign that agreement, and I did indeed owe them the money. But then I pointed out that the form did not include a time frame for repayment. Of the roughly four and a half thousand US dollars I owed them, I offered to send them $50 a month, which was within the terms of their agreement. They weren't happy with the arrangement, of course, but it was within the terms of the agreement. And anyone who has worked an inbound call center before knows they didn't deserve it back a penny faster. In the end, I finished my degree and am now working as an IT professional, but they never did get all their money back. Some of the payments got returned after the first year, so I'm still just waiting for further instructions on paying them back. Man, why $50 a month? Why not a penny a month? <laughs> Anyways, that's all the stories we have for today. Um, thanks for listening. I wish you all the best. Uh, I guess this is my final goodbye. I should probably do something special. How about... Goodbye.